Libra, and welcome to Adventures in Pixie Land. This is going to be your weekly reading going from August 23rd through August 30th. This space has been cleared and these decks have been shuffled and cut with your energy in mind. So we are ready to jump in. But before we do, let's handle that busy work. Please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell below so you will know when Libra content is uploaded. Libra content comes out every single Wednesday. If you're feeling my vibe and would like a personal read, please feel free to check out that description box below. If you're really feeling my vibe and would like to subscribe, please click on that link to my Patreon account in the description box below. Patreon subscribers get a certain number of free monthly personal readings, depending upon subscription, reading, uh, subscription level. Also down there, you'll find all of my social media contacts. And on every single one of those platforms, you will get a daily astrology reading, a daily Elder Futhark rune, a daily Romance Angel Oracle card, a daily Fairy Wisdom Oracle card, a daily Starseed Oracle card, and a daily Priestess of Light Oracle card. All of those things can be found put together with an energy summary here on YouTube. Each one of those, starting from the 27th, will only be posted on YouTube, but links to the YouTube channel for each of those videos will be posted on all of the social media platforms with the name and the title, so you will know what you're clicking on. Um, also down there is a link to my Red Bubble store. That uh, Red Bubble store has a variety of products on it. In fact, I have decided today, because uh, I am... At the time of recording this, just about to start a new job, so I got a whole new computer set up from that job. And um, I now need a separate, different, new mouse pad. So that's the next product that I'll be ordering for myself off the Red Bubble store. I have to decide which one of my designs I like best as a mouse pad, and then I will, you know. I uh, have it printed up and I will show it to you when it comes in. Uh, let's jump in to the astrology. Starting on the 23rd, it is happy Virgo season. Wish a happy birthday to a Virgo that you know. Virgo season goes on for the next month and it is all about focusing on small tasks that make big gains, i.e. take those big picture goals and break them down into small achievable tasks. Very granular. I mean super granular, more granular than what you're normally comfortable with. I'm talking about like, okay, so you want to get a degree. First you pick a college that's good for that particular degree. First you pick a degree, then you pick the college for that. When you go through and you've picked the college, you're all enrolled and you know, you're ready to start picking your classes, you gotta look at the degree, look at what classes you got. And then once you're in that semester with that class that you have, you need to take a look at how many pages individually do you need to read every day so you can do your assignments on time and can do great good with the good grades, right? study to make sure you can do your tests, all that kind of stuff, and let that build. Let that success build. One good assignment at a time leading to one good grade in one class, and then to the next class, and the next, and the next, until you have earned your degree. We're talking that level of granularity. On an every day, what can I do daily that gives me a da healthy daily patterns that lead me to success? That is what Virgo season is all about. Okay. Now, on this day, I also regret to inform you that at 3.59 p.m. EDT, Mercury's going to go retrograde until September 15th. When Virgo retro, you know, it's in Virgo when Mercury goes retrograde, but uh, Mercury's retrograde in Virgo, which is better than normal because it's one of the signs that it rules. But I'll remind you that... Virgo's card in the Major Arcana is the Hermit. So in some cases, no news might be good news, okay? But we're also going to stress out more over that uh, 
lack of communication being there. We might not have as much emotional reassurance via verbal communication as what we are normally comfortable with. It's time to use our active listening skills. Don't be afraid to, to speak up when needed. On the 24th, we have a void of course moon at 110 a.m. EDT. And at 407 a.m. we have a first quarter moon. Spend extra time making decisions and use your previous decision making to help you overcome obstacles in the future. You can solve problems that look like problems that you've dealt with before. It's not like you need a whole new solution. Okay. It is in passionate, fun-loving, dynamic Sagittarius. We also have action taker Mars in practical Virgo. Trine, it's a 120 degree angle. Pluto, the planet of transformation, retrograde in Capricorn. Pluto retrograde in Capricorn is about karma. You're gonna wanna take back your power from karmic people. Focus on that positive energy instead. Do not allow them to drag you down. Do not allow them to make you small. On the 27th, we have a waxing gibbous moon in Capricorn. So we're here now. Assess your goals and figure out what's working for you right now and what may need to change. And it's going to be at a very practical level as practical Capricorn. Okay. And we got that Mars, action taker Mars, is now entering the sign of Libra. Which means that our actions are going to be about our relationships. They're going to be uh, about um, having more patience for people around us. They're going to be more about finding that balance within the relationships with the people that we're interacting with. We also have that sun, self-focused sun in Virgo, practical Virgo, all about what can we practically do. Opposite 180 degrees in the night sky. Strict Saturn, and in this case I'm going to say restrictive Saturn because it's retrograde. Saturn is the ruling planet for Capricorn. Okay? And it's in dreamy Pisces. When Saturn is in direct in Pisces, it's about how do I heal? What do I need to do? How do I fix me? How do I change my response? How do I make it so I never have to deal with this situation ever again in my life? We are in that place. right? But when it's retrograde, we don't think the problem is us. We think the problem is everybody else. And we're pointing fingers at other places. So people are going to try to restrict you today. They're going to try to oppress you. You're going to have more patience for those people, but you still need to be setting firm boundaries. On the 28th, we have a void, of course, moon at 7.49 a.m. And at 10.32 a.m., that wax and gibbous moon, so we're still assessing our goals, is now in humanitarian Aquarius. Humanitarian Aquarius it's about our feelings, because the moon is our feelings, about our place in the world. Where do we fit in the grand big, big picture scheme of life? What does it mean? What do we have to do? Okay, our social circles are expanding. And we're going to want to spend more time around people. Especially that Mars being in Libra. Okay. Now, the other thing that happens on this day is disruptive Uranus and foundational Taurus. So, found Uranus, the planet of disruption and innovation. Foundational Taurus is the old order, old school, old, you know, the traditional values, okay? The Uranus being disruptive, it depends on which side of that equation you're looking at, right? When you've got a product and you're selling it on the market and you're already established and you've got a client base... Right? And somebody comes in with a different version of what you got, only it's got innovations that you don't got. Now you got to run and catch up and try to, try to you know, not lose your client base by putting out a different product, a better product. That other person putting that stuff out that to the clients, to the people who are going to buy your product, that, other, that competitor is innovative. And for you, that competitor is disruptive. They just messed up your financial flow by stealing some of your client base. And they force you to keep up. This is what Uranus does. It's a planet of technological advances, too. It's been in direct in Taurus since 2019, which is why we've been having all the social unrest. It's one of the reasons we've been having all the social unrest. There are some other outer planets that are responsible for that, too. 
But a great deal of social unrest happens when these certain planets that we have going on right now, those outer planets, are in the various signs that they're in. And it happens every single time they get into these, these signs. It's what happens. There is actually a pattern to humanity. Uranus goes retrograde, though, for the rest of 2023, which means that things just start to slow down. Time starts to slow down. And then everything, instead of everything trying to change so much so fast, we're going to settle into what our new normal is. And we're going to be able to focus what's on our plate right now and not a bunch of other stuff at it. On the 30th, we have uh, the moon at 9.56 a.m. Entering into Pisces. It's a full moon. This is a great time to set goals and make any promises to yourself on a deeper level. It's time for your journey to face inward. It is an opportunity for you to write 10 full moon wishes. Full moon wishes are things you want to shed from your life. Make sure you word them very carefully. If you got to stop having money problems. Right? The universe doesn't really understand the word stop. Okay, so you have to say things like to not be in a lack mentality and things of that nature. Or, you know, or you could, if somebody's being particularly problematic, you can put down somebody's name. It's okay. It won't, nothing bad, it's not like it's going to kill them. It's what you want to shed from your life, not what you're trying to destroy. This is not universe destroying list, Okay. So it's, it's just a matter of things you don't want to deal with anymore. And it's more like feeling sad. Right? And I, I recommend you keep things as simple as possible and let the universe fill in the blanks. Now, the full moon goes full at 9.36 p.m. Full moon in Pisces is about cleaning out the garbage that's in your subconscious. It means taking more time to be in silence. To figure out what energies are influencing you at all where those messages are even coming from. And it's about endings. It's about clearing out that subconscious garbage. There will be an entire video um, or, and some oracle cards for the full moon. That by the time this is uh, airing, it will already be out. Libra. Okay then. Libra, August 23rd through the 30th. 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 Libra, August 23rd through the 30th, Libra, August 23rd, through the 30th, Libra, August 23rd, through the 30th, Libra, August 23rd. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I hope that this reading resonates with you. If you are a new viewer, welcome. I will clarify all these cards. But before you do, past, present, near future, someone to you, you to the someone, balance, outcome, summary. This is a general reading. Take what resonates, leave the rest. There is no gender in tarot. You are either walking up to someone and talking or someone is walking up to you and talking and this whole reading is a conversation between you and at least one other person some cards do mean groups this one too also on this channel relationship is defined as a continued interaction between any two people i'm going to describe the energy you're going to place it on the person that sounds like and then that's the relationship we're talking about What's going on with that? 
Never noticed that before. We'll go over that a little bit more carefully. All right. Um, so in your past there, higher fit energy, you could have been dealing with a Taurus. It's also a part of the divine. It's about higher education, higher learning. If you peep this, it's the ascended master. It's Jacob's ladder to the seed of life. Okay. So the divine is interplaying or you're interacting with a Taurus or were in your past. Chariot energy there. That's cancer energy. It's fast moving energy. It could involve a uh, travel movement or a change of some kind. If you um, peep that dude, it's impetuous energy. He's not wearing any shoes. He doesn't have any shirts. He's not in steering the carriage, really, because he's not even hold this horse. Horses aren't even tethered. So he's not in control of anything. He's just on top of the carriage. This does not seem like a smart location to be. Lover's card. That's Gemini energy. There's a lot of people. Somebody could have made a choice here. With that lover's could be about a relationship but it doesn't have to be five of swords peep out this person in the background it's causing troubles for this person over here it's an argument a cold calculated one but if you peep down there in the corner what i was like what is that there is actually i don't know if i can get a good angle of it for you still the red it's like somebody bleeding is that dude over there trying to, that's causing troubles for the other person, is he bleeding? Yeah, it looks like blood. I think that's supposed to be blood. That's kind of crazy. So it was some sort of bloody war. Cold, calculated destruction of some kind. Sort of fight. Ace of Pentacles. is a, a new opportunity. That's your present moment. Somebody's causing problems for you in your present moment. Ace of Pentacles is an opportunity coming into you or, or an opportunity that came into that other person. I feel like it's more coming into you because Five of Pentacles, somebody feels left out in the cold and somebody over here, Three of Swords. That is heartache. It's outside interference. It is... Um, Yeah, I mean, it's heartache. And outside interference doesn't have to be, like, cheating. It can be for, for some people. But it could also be, like, the kids are sick, the boss is a jerk, the car broke down. Outside interference. Stressors on a relationship that aren't ordinarily there. Three of Swords. Eight of Wands. You're going to want to talk with this person. Scorpio energy there in the balance and the judgment so choice needs to be made in, in that balance. Page of Wands, some sort of, you know, quick communication coming in. It could be heated. The person could be acting a little immature with that Page of Wands energy. Or it could be from a fire sign child. So Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Four of Pentacles, there could be some sort of blocking energy coming in here with this heated argument. Eight of Cups walking away situation happening. Why? Because seven of swords. Lying, stealing, cheating, manipulating. So I mean, it's not being honest. I find it kind of interesting here. You guys don't by chance happen to be interacting with a Capricorn, do you? Because there were similar cards to this in the Capricorn reading right about that, but they were in the Page of Wands in their communication in, the, in the, this position. I'm not even going to look at that. What is this Hierophant card in Libra's past? Thoughts? So you could have been thinking about a Taurus or the Divine. What's this Hierophant card? In Libra's past, Tower, Four of Pentacles. What's this Hierophant card? Three of Cups. It's a reconciliation, a celebration. It's a it's 
friends, something in a group, four of pentacles, somebody blocking something. The tower is a complete and total destruction happening. It's Aries energy. So somebody blocking some sort of reconciliation or thinking about blocking some sort of reconciliation here or some sort of celebration is a tower. It could be the divine. It could be a tower. It could be a Taurus you're talking about that brings about a tower, but it doesn't have to be. It could just be the divine. Something was blocked and it brought about a tower. What is this chariot card in Libra's past? Courthouse. That's Libra energy. I'm going to move forward. What's this chariot card? Could have bought a new car. You could have gone on a vacation. What's this chariot card? What's this chariot card where you could have moved on from this relationship? Full card. It's Aries energy. Taking a leap of faith because something was a nightmare. This tower, this ending was a nightmare for you. Justice card. Well, the court, courthouse is like it in the justice card. You had no choice but to move forward, maybe move quick into a new home. Because the four of wands, it can be in a relationship, but it could also mean a home. It means stability. Fours are about stability. This is definitely about stability. It's about a relationship of some kind usually, but it could be a home. New car, new home, something you had to do quickly. Take a leap of faith and just go do What's this two, well, what's this uh, lover's card? What's this lover's card in Libra's past? And you had to choose a new path with that leap of faith. What's this lover's card? What's this lover's card? What's this lover's card? What's this lover's card? Leo energy there with the strength. There's this need to be strong. There's some sort of argument here in the past. Five of Swords. This is going to resurface here in the present moment. Felt like a betrayal. Ten of Swords. So there was a need to be strong here. Leo energy. Gemini energy. And to go on this new divinely led path because you took that leap of faith. You see the butterflies and the light coming through the trees and the flowers? That's spirit saying, come this way. Spirit was leading you down a new path, asking you to be strong, making, asking you to make a choice. What's this five of swords in Libra's present moment? Family room, so it could be something from your friends and family unit. It could be arguing with family. What's this five of swords or friends? You know, personal life, not work life. What's this five of swords? Oh. Okay. <laughs> there was confusion here with that seven of cups about the future. There's confusion here. You're not sure what the future holds within the family. Because there's some sort of argument here with that Five of Swords. Knight of Pentacles, any earth sign. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, heavy on the Virgo, also card of Leo. Just like the Strength card. It's a, a need to slowly move forward due to an argument. What's this Ace of Pentacles in Libra's near future? You have an opportunity. To, uh, to travel, possibly. What's this Ace of Pentacles? What's this Ace of Pentacles in Libra's near future? What's this Ace of Pentacles in Libra's near future? Chariot card again. So again, it could be about moving. It could be about a vehicle. It could be about a trip, a vacation. And this is also fast-moving energy. So very quickly... Knight of Swords, any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. Heavy on that Gemini. Also a card of Taurus. So very quickly. We also have Cancer energy here. 
fast moving energy. These are the two fastest moving cards in the deck. They're both impetuous. Okay, so very quick moving energy, a lot of fast moving communication. Could be coming in from somebody you've known for a very long time. That six of cups. Could be an age difference, a height difference between you and this person about an opportunity to travel or move or something of that nature, a journey. What's this five of pentacles? Mature woman. It's, any, it's like getting the queen of cups. Any water sign? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Heavy on the cancer, also part of Gemini. What's this five of pentacles? What's this five of pentacles? What's this five of pentacles? Ten of cups. So again, within that friends and family unit, because this is like getting that family room card. Knight of Cups, any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, heavy on the Pisces. Also card of Aquarius. Could be dealing with a Gemini and an Aquarius. And they're just not interested in something. Four of Cups. And that leaves you feeling left out in the cold. Five of Pentacles. And you know these people, they're in your friends and family unit. You feel left out in the cold as a response that they don't want to do something. What's this Three of Swords? But they're sad. Somebody's sad. It's like it in the Five of Cups. Hard to break. Sadness. What's this Three of Swords? What's this Three of Swords? What's this Three of Swords? Two of Cups. Ace of Wands. It's Cancer Energy. It's a chance for a new start, a new relationship where there's been this stressor and this sadness. They're feeling stressed and sad. Nine of Pentacles, Minor Arcana, Empress card. Taurus, Libra energy. So you could be interacting with another Libra. You could be interacting with a Taurus. This also uh, is a card of mothers. It's also about being successful. So this person might have been under some, some heartache, some sadness, but they might also step in here with an offer to you. A chance to rebuild some sort of relationship. What's this Eight of Wands? Somebody could literally be in prison. That's gonna be fair, fair for you. What's this Eight of Wands? The communication could come from a prison. What's this Eight of Wands? What's this Eight of Wands? What's this Eight of Wands? Or it could be coming from the court system because of that imprisonment card. Or it could just be whatever communication is coming in has you up in your head. And there's gonna be a need to juggle something based upon this communication. Queen of Cups, any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Heavy on that Cancer, also card of Gemini. Taurus energy here with the Hierophant. So the communication could come in from a Taurus or a water sign, a Gemini. Especially with that Taurus Libra energy right there. But it also could be the divine. Telling you you need to trust your intuition here about how you're going to balance something that you're up in your head about. There's going to be a lot of communication on this subject matter. That's all you'll know who it is. What is this judgment card in Libra's balance? Scorpio energy with the judgment card. What is this judgment card? And Libra's balance. I saw that. I saw one of those cards anyway. What is this judgment card? It's your energy. What is this judgment card? Huh. The judgment card is clarified by the judgment card. And the Knight of Wands. Any fire sign Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, 
having on the Sagittarius, also a card of Scorpio, just like both these judgment cards. So there's some sort of concern standing at this crossroad because there's some sort of concern about some inconsistent energy, possibly by a Scorpio, based upon choices that people are making. The choice that hangs in the balance. What is this Page of Wands in Libra's outcome? Okay, so this person could be acting like a child when they communicate, or the communication could be about a child. What is this Page of Wands? What is this Page of Wands? What is this Page of Wands? Six of Swords moving into calmer water. King of Swords in the air sign. Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. Heavy on the Aquarius. Also a card of Capricorn. It's also an authority figure. Could be a doctor, a lawyer, a judge. There's some sort of divine timing at play here within this communication, that's divine timing, within this communication, possibly about a child, possibly with somebody who's acting immature. Some critical decision that needs to be made in order for things to move forward. What is the four, this four pentacles in Libra's summary? Privileged lady, has Taurus Libra energy. What is this? Four of Pentacles. What is this Four of Pentacles? So, Eight of Wands, communication, lots of communication going back and forth. It's your energy. It's also the energy of Taurus. So, somebody's blocking something, some sort of toxicity, possibly some Capricorn. Okay. The Devil card. Why? Because lying, stealing, cheating, manipulating. Seven of Swords. And communicating here about that lying, stealing, cheating, manipulating. Also a card of strategy. What is this Eight of Cups? Chariot energy again. So it's about a change. What is this Eight of Cups? About movement, about travel. What is this Eight of Cups? This is Eight of Cups. The universe is being funny. I would look up 888. This is Eight of Cups. It's clarified by the Eight of Cups, but you also got the Eight of Swords. So being way up in your head about this change happening here, about this ending, about this travel, about this movement, about this choice, this Gemini energy. So that could be who you're walking away from, but it could just be a choice because there is a need to walk away from something, a need for a change, a need for an alteration. What is the Seven of Swords in Libra's summary? Courtship, it's like getting the Two of Cups. What's the Seven of Swords? What's the Seven of Swords? What's the Seven of Swords? It's a desire to set down this burden and have victory in a relationship where there's been lying, stealing, cheating, manipulating. Recovering from that lying, stealing, cheating, manipulating, setting down that burden, walking towards that Ace of Pentacles. Somebody's moving forward towards some, because remember these summarize this. Some communications coming in, something about a, you know critical thinking being needed, possibly have something to do with the child, divine timing being at play, and any attempts with this double seven of swords happening here, of anybody to, who, to toxically try to stop this opportunity from coming in, will not work. No matter what side of that equation anybody happens to find themselves on. Advice for Libra, August 23rd through the 30th. 
Advice for Libra, August 23rd through the 30th. Ten of Swords. It's a betrayal. It's an ending because of a betrayal. It's time to end that commitment in that Three of Pentacles and take that leap of faith. That's the advice. The Ten of Swords is a feeling of betraying us all walking away, and Three of Pentacles is a commitment. It could be a job, could be a marriage, could be any number of things. Could be a plan. But take that leap of faith. It's Aries energy there. If you have a yes or no question you would like to an you would like answered, this is the time to think it because this is the deck that does it. I'm going to pull three cards. This is your opportunity to pick three yes or no questions. Message for Libra. Improving health. Message for Libra. Unlikely. Message for Libra. The situation will improve. Yes, no, yes. Oh, wait, we're not ready for that yet. I'm about to skip a step. Advice for Libra, August 23rd through the 30th. Bring love into the situation, new moon and Aquarius. Advice for Libra, August 23rd through the 30th. Believe in the impossible, blue moon. Advice for Libra, August 23rd through the 30th. Hold your vision, fixed moon. What you don't see coming at the bottom of the deck. It's time to release negativity. Full moon in Scorpio. A time to give rather than take. New moon in Virgo. Conclusions are within reach. Full moon eclipse. What do you need to release? Waning moon. I love it when it does its own call and answer. What do you need to release? It's time to release that negativity. Blue moon, so that you can go heal. Because, you know, something's over. I mean, you got a tower in the past, right? Something's over. Something's over, it's done. Message for Libra. Ancient Fae. We were here at the birth of the world. We wove the energy. Raised high the great stone circles. We now share our ancient wisdom with you. And with it, a knowing of what you must do. Well, I hope that helps, Libra, because it is what I have for you. And just remember, as you go about the world this week, that you are a child of the universe. No less than the trees and the stars. And you have a right to be here.